kilometre from the Queensland border. It was part of the Odin's Warriors New Year run, the Tweed's biggest club, hosting members of the Rebels and other outlaw gangs. If this happened in Queensland, all of them would have been arrested. They can't have some safe enclave where they can go and, and, and operate out of back into Queensland. Police are convinced the Tweed will take over from the Gold Coast as Australia's bikey capital. The coast's Sphinx have already moved into a Chindra clubhouse, now calling themselves the Mongols. The Odin's Warriors have their stronghold in South Tweed, the Nomads just down the road in Byron Bay. Senior Queensland police sources believe the Banditos are also actively looking at real estate over the border. And we haven't seen any come across the border and no increase in it whatsoever. The difference in laws between the two states has seen a battle line drawn right here on the border. Queensland bikies who are now struggling to operate are muscling into New South Wales where rival clubs have been for many decades. New South Wales police are convinced there's no problem. Their bikey strike force investigated the area late last year but flew back to Sydney with nothing to report. The bikey issue uh, and organised crime issues don't recognise state borders so it really needs a joint approach between Queensland and New South Wales and also the federal government. Chris O'Keefe, Nine News. Drinkers would be cut off sooner and locked out of bars earlier under tough new laws proposed by state Labor. It comes as New South Wales announced drastic changes to its own liquor licensing to combat drunken violence. Propose a ban on late night boozing and you're bound to get backlash. That is ridiculous. And then just crippling the hospitality industry. But Labor and doctors say it's needed to save lives. And the most effective tool we have is closing things earlier. Among a raft of changes, the opposition wants pubs and clubs lockout times wound back to 1am. All service of alcohol stopped at 3am and high alcohol drinks like shots banned after midnight. I don't want to see innocent families' lives shattered. I don't want to see the end results of surgeons and doctors having to put people's faces and bodies back together. It comes after New South Wales announced drastic changes to their own liquor laws. A 1.30am lockout, last drinks at 3am, increased fines for antisocial behaviour and a minimum jail term of eight years for drug or alcohol fueled one-punch deaths. Doctors believe the proposed laws will cut alcohol-related assaults by 30%, but our government isn't rushing to follow suit. I just am very clear that we have not made a decision and that's what I want. I want a debate at the moment and I particularly again say I want the 18 to 25s to have their say. Last year 30,000 Queenslanders were treated at hospitals for drunken assaults and the figures are rising. In 2011 at the Royal Brisbane Hospital 295 patients required facial surgery after being hit during a night out. Fast forward to 2013 that figure rose to over 500. It's a cultural problem and changing trade hours will only push the problem to a different time and place. It's not going to stop those very small numbers in the community who feel they have the right to engage in any social behaviour. Live now to Sophie Walsh on Caxton Street and does that mean pubs and clubs will close at 3am? Well, no, Melissa, they'll be able to stay open after 3 a.m., but they'll only be able to serve non-alcoholic drinks. Now, the industry says that in no way is that economically viable, and what is going to happen is most of them are going to end up shutting at 3 a.m. anyway because they can't afford to survive on purely soft drinks. As for the New South Wales uh, one-punch death new laws requiring a minimum eight-year jail term, well, our government says that they will consider everything, and so they're not going to rule that in or out here. All right, thanks.